What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be going over how I get logos to go into the Team Builder site using Photoshop and how I get the text that you see on the jerseys in there and the end zones and just the processes that I go through. Now I'm not going to be able to show you every detail because I've been using Photoshop for a couple of years now and some things I've just I've, I've been picking up over time but I will show you the basics that get you started and hopefully it can help you guys building your own creations. I went ahead and put Hampton, U, and Fisk on the board here. Those are the two latest teams that I've built in the Team Builder website. If you're interested, you can download both of these guys today, and they are available for you to use in College Football 25. So without further ado, let's get over to Photoshop. All right, so I went ahead and I preloaded Photoshop with a few different options here for me to show you how to extract these things, fit them to what you want them to be, and then upload them to the website. So I have here just a simple night logo that I found on Google Images. Of course, you can search whatever you want. I'm just using this as an example. You can see here that it has just a white background and then it's got a faint gray outline on it. Luckily for us and for Photoshop, this is enough to separate the two. So in order to take this background away and to use this as a standalone logo, all you have to do is go over to your eraser tool here and you should have a few different options. Click on Magic Eraser Tool. And then you see now it's got the little little dots above the eraser. Make sure that you have this unlocked. You have this layer selected. And then you're just going to click on the background and it takes it away. Now, not everything is going to be this clean. There are going to be situations where it can't get everything fully because maybe if shading or like a drop shadow is on something or whatever the case is, in that case, the only real way that you can fix this stuff is to take a, it is to take the eraser, the regular eraser tool, go up here, change the sizing of it. So that way the circle is small enough for you to do the detailed stuff you want to do. Use the magnifying glass to get in. Let's just say we don't want the gray here for this part. I mean, obviously we do, but I'm just, for example purposes, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take this and I'm just going to do this out until I am happy with it. And that's exactly what you have to do. And then, you know, see there how I just messed up a little bit. Oh no, we got some of the black. All you gotta do is hit control Z. And it'll undo the things that you do. So just like that, you can fix it up how you want. And then you're ready to go with getting the logo taken out and put into the team builder website. Now, if you're also looking to use, let's say this logo and you want it to be a different color, you can do that as well using the paint bucket tool. So this right now is just gray, white, and black. Let's say we want the gray to be blue. We're gonna go ahead and hit right here on this little colored square. Yours isn't gonna be this color. It's gonna be whatever color is currently set for your paint bucket tool. Bring that over here. All right, it's gonna pop this screen up. You're just gonna pick whatever color you want. So let's just say we're gonna go with this really vibrant blue. Now you can see that the color down here has changed to blue. And now I'm gonna click on the paint bucket tool. And I'm just gonna click once again on the layer. And then all I have to do is click in the areas that I want to be this color. So let's say I'm gonna go down here and we're gonna do this gray. All right. So now did you see how it wasn't able to decipher the two there? In that scenario, you're gonna run into it sometimes like where it can't decipher, even though there is a very clear difference between these two colors, it's going to depend on up here on your tolerance. I have it set to a five right now. And then if I click here, now it'll actually separate the two. It doesn't make it very fancy though. You see how it's sort of jagged and whatnot. And you will have that. So you have to decide if you're okay with that or if you don't want to use that as an option. Maybe you go with just that. That may, might look a little bit better. But once you blow it up, it will look a lot better. And you have to think this is going to be on a helmet. You're not going to have to see it blown up like this in the game. So sometimes when you have little inconsistencies, it should be fine. All right, now, obviously this is not something I would put on a, on a helmet because it looks pretty trashy to me. Maybe you like it. I'm sorry if you find this to be a cool logo. I just wanted to show you how you can manipulate the colors and you can also do it on the outline as well. I mean, you just have to sort of play around with things. All right, so now that I have this logo all set to go, I can go ahead and save it. When you save it, make sure that you save it as, like go to export as, not export as PNG, because this, you don't have control over what the file size is. So go to export as, this box is gonna pop up, right? For you to export. You have to look right here and see what the file size is. The file size here listed at 512 or more. You're not gonna be able to upload it to the site. So this has to be smaller than 512. If it is, you're good to go. 
If it's not, just go over to the right side and it says smaller file and then 8-bit in parentheses, just check that box and you'll see that number drop significantly. Then you can go ahead and export it, save it wherever you wanna save it. And then you can take it on over to the Team Builder site, upload it there and place it wherever you'd like it to be. Now, the next step here that I wanted to show you is working with words. Let's just say you wanted this word mark out of the of the red area because of course you want this you want to use this you know, somewhere else right you want the the freestanding text you're going to follow the same exact principle sometimes it's a little bit more difficult with text but same thing applies you're going to go here you're going to go to magic eraser click on the background boom and you see how in the in between it doesn't really pop everything out right on the inside of the letters so you're gonna have to go in here just like you did before Click back on the eraser tool, click that, click that, click that, go all the way through, just click right where the color is that you want to be taken out. Go. I think that's the last thing. I believe so. And we're going to bring this back out. And now, even though the coloring is a little off on the outside, you can sort of see that hint of red. That is what I was referring to before on the last one where some things are just not going to be perfect because they were sort of blended or there was like a drop shadow or something on here to the effect to cause this to, to not be a clean break from the white lettering or the gray lettering to the, the red background. So in some scenarios, you're just going to have to go in there with the eraser tool. We are super zoomed in. So I'm going to bring this all the way down to like a one. And now I'm on one. That means one individual pixel. So if I just go here, see how I can cut this out and get that red out of there. I'm not saying this is an easy, simple thing to do. It does take some patience and whatnot, but it is possible to do. And I'm not doing this perfect by any means. I'm just doing this to show you how difference of, of you can make just by taking a few seconds to touch up the things that you're working with. All right, and now when I zoom back out, you can still tell that there's some in there, but look at how much cleaner that looks from far away. Like compared to this T, you can see the red around the T, you can barely see it around this. So there are ways that you can go ahead and fix these things without really getting too messy. Another reason I wanted to show you this, this word mark logo is because you guys were asking about how I got certain fonts or certain whatever in the game for end zones and for jerseys. And there's actually a few sites that I use to get what I'm looking for. And this here, first one is where you can search what the font is. It's literally called what the font. And this is the website here, myfonts.com. You can also just search what the font and just look for my fonts. And then what you'll do here is in this bar, you're gonna go ahead and upload an image. All right, so I just changed it to this because this is much cleaner. You need to find something that has like a clean background, but this is something I actually already made. So I have this font already, but I just wanna use this to show you what it does. So you go ahead and identify font. Once you have yours selected, it's gonna bring you to this screen here, okay? And once you're on this screen, it's gonna tell you what every font is. And now, not saying that they're gonna be able to find them, but what you can do is you can either search for this font on Google and try to find a TTF file to download for it, or you can use a site that I like to use, and you might just wanna use this just to find different fonts to use. It's called 1001 Free Fonts. And if you download them, you just install them on your computer and they're immediately involved like on your stuff. So you can immediately use them in your, um, like in your Photoshop or whatever program that you use. So all you need to do is go here and you can click on whatever. Let's just go with headline, right? Let's go here. We're going to scroll down and it's going to show you all the different types of, of text that it has. You can put in your own text here. And see all the different stuff that I searched for already to try to find fonts on here. So let's just say we're going to search Knights, right? We're going to make a team called the Knights. And then I can look through and I can decide if I want these fonts. And maybe I find one here that I actually want. Who knows? Um, Like, let's say we think this one looks cool, right? Like, this looks like it would be a really cool font for a logo. Even if it's not for the Knights logo. Maybe we use this for something else. I'm going to go ahead and hit download. It's going to pop up a box here for you to download from. Um, I'm just going to switch to my fonts folder here. This is my fonts folder. I have one separately made, so that's why I have a fonts folder. You don't need one. You can download it to wherever you want. And this one is called mask.zip. Save it. And now if I'm back here in Photoshop, all I have to do 
is open up my file folder. I'm gonna go in my fonts folder again, and you're gonna see this mask.zip up here. I'm gonna right click. Okay, you have to click on it once so that it gets highlighted, okay? So click on it once, right click, extract all. Another box will pop up, just hit extract. And it'll automatically open up this other box for you. And what you're looking for is this right here, the TTF or the true type font file. And if you click, right click, just click install. It's installed. Now I can go back here. All right, so I just colored that picture so there's a nice background for you to look at. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the text box, make a text line here. We're gonna type in the word Knights because that's what we were looking for before. And now I have the text. Now that we have our text, we just have to click here. And then over here on the right side under character, you'll see a drop down menu and you can change it to whatever font you want. We're gonna go down to find mask. And there it is. Okay, some file, some fonts are bigger by nature than others. So that's why this is all conjumbled here. Even though it's still the same font size, it's gonna look a little bit different. So if I double click here, I can go back up here to adjust this back down to 72 or if I wanna go 150. Oh, 150 is a little too big, 140. There we go. All right, and now we have our font. And if you guys are unaware of how to do things in Photoshop, there are some things that are really cool to do. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So if you guys saw my the text on my Huskies build for the NIU Huskies, I had that really nice outline behind it. That was not part of the text at the beginning. This is just plain text. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. So I clicked here. And then I went over here, right clicked, and then it says convert to shape. So I'm gonna convert the text to shape. And then I'm gonna click on this path selection tool here. And now it puts all these little boxes around there. You see all these little dots around there. I'm gonna go right up here. I'm gonna leave it white and then stroke. I'm gonna pick a color. So let's just say yellow. And now under this line here, this, the stroke options, you wanna make sure that this is not on the top one. You want it to be on, I think the bottom one or the, the second one, you have to toy around with it. I always go here and then make sure your corners are actually squared, not like curved or anything like that, squared. And then when you come down here to adjust your size, see how it puts a really nice crisp font around or a stroke around your text, but it makes it look like a logo. And now we have that for a logo. That was very quick and easy to make. Now, of course, you might not like the color choices or the word or whatever, or even the font. But the question, the, the, what the point I'm trying to make here is it's very easy to create this. And now if I wanted to use this particular word on a jersey in Team Builder, I would just make sure I hide the background or delete it if it's not already gone. And then I just save this. I save this as a picture and then I will upload it to the website. And if I want to change these colors, I can use the thing that I taught you guys before. I can just go down here, paint bucket. Um, let's make the inside blue. Select the paint bucket. It's gonna ask me to raster size. And then I'm just gonna color in, whoops, color in the letters. And you can do this for every which way you want. This is what I usually do. Like if I'm using a blue and yellow like this, I'll do a white inside, yellow outside, white inside, blue outside. And then I'll do a blue inside, yellow outside, blue inside, white outside, all the different colors that I could think of. And then I'll go into the, the uniform selection and I'll just have them all at my disposal. So that way, whatever looks the best, I can toy around with them is what I end up going with. So once again, we're gonna go ahead and save this at, or export this as, and this one should be fine. Yeah, 32, this is when you don't have to worry about anything. Export it, save it upload it to the team builder site. And then you can put this on your helmets. You can put this on your Jersey, uh, your pants. Um, you can put this uh, in a number of different spots. So now we're here on the creative team section and I'm not gonna do any of this. We're gonna pretend this is already done. We're just gonna go straight to uniforms. And let's just say I wanna, you know, I want a gray helmet to go shiny, matte, whatever. And let's say we want to add this as our side logo. So we're gonna go here um, and all we're gonna do is click on this box. It's gonna tell you all this fancy stuff, confirm. You'll pull up your folder. You can bring in the asset that you had. Let this do its thing. 
And there we go. Now it's on the helmet. And now we can do a little bit of customizing if we want. Let's just say we want this to be chrome or glossy or whatever. Now we can mess around with the sizing of it. And then let's say we wanted this on the, let's just say we're gonna have this on our jersey sleeve, right? Maybe that's what you wanna do. Maybe you wanna make the Knights branding on the jersey. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna select a deep, well, let's do a white jersey. All right, we got white jersey, brand logo doesn't matter. We're gonna go down to custom layers once again. I just always delete this one. Add custom layer. We are gonna use this. And now down, and then once you have it uploaded, you'll see it here on the chest. Look at all these different options. Right chest, left chest, collar, chest, back, right sleeve, left shoulder, right shoulder, left sleeve. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose right sleeve. And it's gonna bring it over to the side here. And then what we can do is we can adjust the sizing of it like so. Do the same thing over here. Add another layer. Knights. We're gonna do left shoulder. Oh, sorry, left sleeve. And then we're going to this up again until it's right where we want it. Save. Now we have it on both sides. And you can have it showing on your shoulder pads. You can put it on your chest plate. That's usually what I end up doing with this. I'll put it on the chest here and look at how nice it looks across the chest. And then I'll, and then if you're wondering, you can lower these numbers. Go in here, go down to advanced placement under position one, bring this down. You can bring the numbers down so that way you can see that fully. And that's how I add the text to the jerseys. And then of course, for the end zones, you know, I do the same exact thing just for with the stadium. So I'm gonna go here, we're gonna go end zones. Uh, we'll just make this background red. We're gonna mirror it. And then we'll go back to logos. And then for the midfield, we're gonna upload our logo. You can also, you don't have to just do midfield, right? You can go down here, turn off secondary if you don't want the EA stuff there. Then there's another custom layers here. Add custom layer. Choose it again, and then you'll have the option of putting it in the end zone. So we're just gonna put it in left end zone, adjust the size once again to your liking, move it up and down to center it, and then apply. And then of course, add another layer. They have fixed this now, which is nice. And then if you do right end zone, it'll automatically flip it and center it for you. All you have to do is adjust the sizing. And then of course, once again, adjust up or down to center it properly once you have resized it. And there you go. Now you have a fully functioning field with the proper coating on it, right? And the rest is up to you. You know, so now I'm hoping that with this little quick tutorial, you know how I make the text, how I make it fancy in my own right, how I adjust logos and, you know, all sorts of things. And then how I add them on the jerseys and where you can put them on the jerseys or the pants or whatever you want. Um, one last tip here, if you're looking to use Let's just say you want to use a word for your stripe on pants. What I do is I'll go down here and then I will choose a basic stripe like this one or this one. And I'll make it all the same color like that. And then I will upload my logo. Add a custom layer. I'll upload this just like so. Choose right thigh. And now if you want it to be on this side, you want this number to be 89. There is a very slight, not straight up and down, okay? I, I've learned this through trial and error. You can make it the size different and then, and then I can make it wherever I want it. And then all I wanna do really is I want to line it up within the realm of the, the stripe, right? So let's just say that's what I want for the sizing. And let's say I want it to be right there. And all I'm gonna do is get it perfectly aligned with the stripe. All right, there we go. So you can see that's pretty much dead center. Then I can apply, go up here, hit none. And now I have knights here on my pant leg for my, my stripe instead of a normal traditional stripe. And you can do that on both sides. This side is 91 instead of 90. Yep, 91 on this side, 89 on this side and then just try to match them up as best as you can. Use it to another stripe if you have to, and then just take them away when you're done. And there you have it. That's how I add text to my pants. So that is all I had. Just wanted to explain to you guys how to use this stuff and how to make your own creations. I will be doing more teams as the time goes on. Um, I have quite a few more teams that have already been asked of me to do, so I will be working on that 
over the next week or so. And also expect another episode of the NIU Dynasty to come out. And some more information about Madden 25 is dropping soon. So, of course, you know I'm going to be in on that game since that's my bread and butter. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys need anything else, if you guys think of something that you're still not sure of that you see me doing, let me know down below. I'm always willing to do these little quick videos to, you know, teach you guys some stuff and help you out in your own endeavors to making your own great content or great stuff that you'll get to enjoy. And if this did help you, hit that like button before you leave. Subscribe if you have not already and turn on that bell notification. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.